my name is um, Tinu Williamson Taylor. Born Tinu Onipidi, 54 years ago, to um, parents of African Nigerian, specifically heritage. Um, when I was born, um, I was fine for the first six months, and I had my first crisis at six months old. I was rushed to St. Mary's Paddington and I was diagnosed with sickle cell disease, but they didn't say sickle cell to my parents then. They told my parents I have a condition common among African babies. My parents they had, you know, didn't have anything to, to work with, but I've accepted it. I think having lived uh, half a century, <laughs> I have accepted it. Uh, and, um, and I think I do now try and encourage the younger people sometimes about how my strategies sometimes. Growing up was, people accepted, but people were, so you could tell that they, people were worried. C class, we tend to look different. I mean, now I'm nice, nice and plumpy and, you know, real filled out. You know, we look skinny and, <laughs> and you know, almost like lifeless sometimes and two things. And um, yes, I did feel different. I feel different in terms of um, the opportunities I was allowed to take. You do know that you restricted in what you could do. You hear about somebody else's child that died of the condition. My parents was like, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, because when you do break down, they're the ones that have to look after you and have to reschedule everything around you. We do have pains. I probably have pains every morning, which meant that it affected school attendance. So on average, I missed a term a year throughout my school life. The sickle cell, um, for me, I don't believe at the moment it's got the treatment yet. It's got things to help us to alleviate the pain and get along with our lives and improve the quality of our lives because it reduces the interruption of the onsets one way or the other. I'll be able to control the pain before it even gets out of control. In terms of treatment, yes, I'm happy in the UK that most of the time I do get pain relief at the point of need. But I also aware that I cannot live on those pain reliefs forever because it's a genetic condition first and foremost. When people are looking for cures and treatments, they're thinking they, you know, when they're thinking, they think that it's something that will take it away forever. No, it's going to relieve us at that point in time of the pain. The pain, you go, you go back, your normal life is going to come back again. That is my experience. So I believe being able to go to work, keeping ourselves busy, takes your mind off that little subtle nagging pains, rather than being, you know, being totally dependent on those drugs and medications that are meant to relieve pains, which also have side effects. It cannot take the pain away forever. It's going to come back. I got to um, Royal London Hospital. I've been going there for a few years now. And um, Dr. Telfer um, mentioned why these trials were taking place. We've got, I've got a good rapport with my doctor, thankfully for that. I think because being a scientist myself, it's easy for us to have such conversations. So apart from him looking after me, we could talk. So Dr. Telfer mentioned it to me and um, enrolled me on the program. It's quite depressing, really, the um, uh, absence or, the, or the, the lack of choice in treatment. We have very few treatments that we can offer. One of them is blood transfusion. But it's not a very satisfactory long-term solution. You don't want to be coming up to the clinic every month or every two months to have a very large volume of blood infused to replace something that's always going to come back again. The other treatment is uh, a drug called hydroxyurea or hydroxycarbamide. Uh, this is a, a drug that was actually developed for another use and has been around for a long time. The way that the drug works and the effect that it has on the body is slightly concerning in that uh, it, it interferes with the way that cells divide and the way that DNA is synthesized. GPT-440 is, is, a, is a new drug, it's an experimental drug. Uh, that uh, has been designed to, um, to be effective in, in treating, treating sickle cell. What the drug does is to uh, bind 
to the hemoglobin and fixes it in the oxygen form. So basically you're preventing the molecule from sickling. And it seems that by doing that, you don't actually significantly uh, reduce the amount of oxygen that can be transported. The oxygen is there and it's going to just make the oxygen more stable to transport around my body, which, so that made sense to me. The first round I did, I was very, very busy with my, with my work. I wasn't even working in London. And I felt that if I wasn't on the drug at that time, I probably would have had crisis. I was driving to Dorset every week, back and forth. You know, not every day, but you know, every week back and forth. And then the psychological side was that you felt good in yourself. So you, you had, had that. However, the downside was I had the liver challenges that I had to stop it and back. And the other part of the trial, which is people have to be prepared for the time commitment. The, the time commitment is no joke. <laughs> I think there's also the concern about commitment to a study because, you know, this is a study will be six months, a year, maybe more. We will help as much as we can by making it easy. If you've got the time in particular, please do participate for the benefit of all. It's a real encouraging thing that uh, to know that, you know, that there are people out there working on the condition, trying to find new treatments, and they're developing things which are going to make for a better future. And uh, people with sickle cell need hope. Uh, we all do, but uh, you know, it, it's traditionally there's been very little to offer, and I think this is, this is an example of something that is really quite hopeful. My plan for the future, I think, I don't know whether it's something that happens when you get to this kind of age where I am at, but it's to try and give something back because sick class, we tend to suffer in isolation as well. We might have the parents doting over us, but they actually do not really sometimes understand exactly what our fears and concerns. And I feel that as a sufferer myself with the experience, hopefully I can be of help to some young sufferers as time goes on.